So let's look at other questions of sulfur and its compounds. So the first question is asking, study the flowchart diagram and answer the question that follow. So in this diagram, as you can see, we have hydrochloric acid, first of all, is reacting with sodium sulfite and then forming gas A. Then the gas A is entering into the dryer, whereby a catalyst gives us the product X. And then finally, we have solution D. So the first question is asking, identify gas A, B, rather identify A, B, C, and D. So what is A? Let's go back to the flowchart. And as you can see, we have dilute hydrochloric acid is reacting with sodium sulfite to get gas A. So what is gas A? So if dilute hydrochloric acid reacts with, uh, reacts with sodium sulfite, so what you're going to get, you're going to get sodium chloride, water, plus sulfur, four oxide. Sodium chloride is solid, water is liquid, and then the gas is sulfur, four oxide. So in this case, our gas A is sulfur, four oxide. So for the sulfur, four oxide, we see that it enters the dryer. Now in the dryer, we have oxygen entering the dryer. So after oxygen entering the dryer, now the gas again enters or passes through the catalytic chamber and to the product X. So let's go uh, to the next one. So identify A, which is the gas is sulfur four oxide. So B, so what is B? The suitable catalyst here, we can use either platinum or we can use vanadium pentoxide. So if you give any of those two, that is correct. So you can use platinum or vanadium pentoxide. Vanadium pentoxide is preferred because it is cheap and less poisoned. So, but any of those catalysts is still the same, uh, the answer to this section. D. So, what is letter D? Whereby letter D we have colorless solution D. So, that colorless solution D is dilute sulfuric acid. So, that is colorless solution D. It is sulfuric acid. So, question B is asking, write the reactions which are formed, or rather, write the reactions which form A, X, and D. So first of all, let's go to the reaction forming A. So the reaction forming gas A, we have dilute hydrochloric acid react with sodium sulfite. If these two react, you are going to get sodium chloride, which is a solid, water molecules, which is a liquid, and then sulfur oxide in gaseous form, and that is the equation for that part of A. So apart from that, let's look at product X. So the equation forming product X. So remember, gas A is sulfur oxide. And then this sulfur oxide is entering the dryer. Inside the dryer, remember, we have oxygen entering the dryer. So we have sulfur oxide and oxygen in the dryer. They are passing through the catalyst forming product X. So therefore, automatically, it will mean that product X is sulfur 6 oxide, whereby this sulfur 6 oxide, the equation is SO2 plus oxygen. We are going to get uh, in the presence of a catalyst. So you must try that catalyst. In the presence of catalyst, we get sulfur 6 oxide in gaseous form. So letter C is asking, suggest a suitable drying agent for gas labeled A. The gas labeled A, remember, is sulfur 4 oxide. Suggest a suitable dehydrating agent. So a suitable dehydrating agent, we can use concentrated sulfuric acid to remove traces of water vapor from gas A. So question letter D is asking, state and explain what would happen to the top yield of the products if the temperature of the catalyst were increased or were raised to 600 degrees Celsius. So if the temperatures were raised to 600 degrees Celsius, so remember, this is not the optimum condition. The optimum condition, remember, we say that it is 450 degrees Celsius at three atmospheres. Now, these temperatures has been increased. So if the temperatures to form sulfur 6 oxide has been increased, there would be the production of very low yield of sulfur 6. There will be production of very low yield because, first of all, we do not have any pressure here. So there will be production of very low yield. So for the optimum temperature, remember, we say that the optimum condition is 450 degrees Celsius at 3 atmospheres. So if we increase the temperature, also the yield goes down. So apart from that, the next question, which is question letter E, is asking, write an equation for the reaction which would occur between solution D and zinc metal. So the reaction for the equation which will occur between solution D and zinc metal. So this question is specific because we need to react sulfuric acid with zinc metal. So if you react sulfuric acid with zinc metal, so we're going to get a salt plus hydrogen gas. So the salt to be obtained will be zinc sulfate plus hydrogen gas. So that is what we are going to obtain. So it's a reaction between an acid and a metal. So we're going to obtain zinc plus hydrogen gas. 
So apart from that, the next question is asking, write the equation occurring when Kong sulfuric acid reacts with the following. So what happens when Kong sulfuric acid reacts with the following? Remember the chemical properties we saw that um, we have different characteristics of Kong sulfuric acid and dilute sulfuric acid. If Kong sulfuric acid reacts, these are what we are going to form. If dilute reacts, these are what we are going to form. So write an equation, uh, write a chemical equation between Kong sulfuric acid and the following. So the first one is potassium nitrate. So what happens when potassium nitrate reacts with Kong sulfuric acid? Simple. We're going to get potassium hydrogen sulfate plus nitric acid. So you must obtain that nitric acid because we are reacting a nitrate salt. If you're reacting a nitrate salt, we must get nitric acid. That is only and only for Kong sulfuric acid. So if you're reacting potassium nitrate we are going with Kong sulfuric acid, we're going to get potassium hydrogen sulfate plus nitric acid. That is a must for you to be able to obtain in that section. So the next one is reacting of Kong sulfuric acid with copper 2 sulfate. So if you react it with copper 2 sulfate, we are going to get copper 2 oxide plus sulfur 2 oxide plus water plus sulfur 4 oxide. So that is exactly what we are going to obtain. So again, remember, as per this equation, so if you react Kong sulfuric acid plus copper 2 sulfate, you are going to get copper 2 oxide plus sulfur 2 oxide plus water molecules plus sulfur 4 oxide gas. That is what you are going to obtain. Don't confuse this with dilute. If you are reacting uh, the copper 2 sulfate with the dilute sulfuric acid, we are going to get salt plus water. Only that. So we're going only and only going to get salt plus water. But in this case, if we react a concentrated, so we're going to get all these four products. So the other one is sugar. What happens if we react sugar with uh, concentrated sulfuric acid? So if we react sugar with Kong sulfuric acid, so we're going to obtain carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and water molecule. That is the reaction that is going to be formed. We're going to obtain carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and water molecules for the reaction. So the next question is asking, name two catalysts that can be used in contact process. Simple, vanadium pentoxide, platinized asbestos or platinum catalyst. So you can use either of those two catalysts in contact process. So the next question is asking, what is meant by the following terms in relation to contact process, okay? What are the terms? So poisoning the catalyst. This is just basically poisoning the catalyst. So this is making the catalyst unable to catalyze or speed up the rate of chemical reaction due to impurities. That is basically poisoning of the catalyst. You are making the catalyst unable to function in an optimum condition. So the next question is asking optimum condition. So the optimum condition, this is the application of 450 degrees Celsius at three atmosphere in the catalytic chamber for the reaction between sulfur dioxide and oxygen to take place in order to form sulfur six oxide. That is the optimum condition. So the optimum condition, remember, it is 450 degrees Celsius at three atmosphere for the reaction between sulfur dioxide and oxygen in the presence of a catalyst to form sulfur six oxide.